In this module, we will study the medical nutrition therapy for neurological diseases and disorders. Due to the role of the neurological system in regulating the overall functions of the body, diseases or injuries in this system could have global impact including altered nutrition status and nutrition risk. For example, these conditions can affect the ability to swallow for stroke patients or dementia patients. Also, patients with these conditions tend to have altered metabolism. They may have acute trauma, which puts them under metabolic stress. Or, on the other hand, such as in the case of a spinal cord injury once they've reached the rehabilitation phase, because in this condition, parts of the muscle um, within the body loses control by the nervous system, the metabolic rate is actually lower than usual. Many patients, whether during the acute or the rehab phase, uh, we will see altered GI function. So this could be the result of the disease or injury themselves, or it could be the side effect of certain medications. For example, in many cases, in people with neurological disorders, we may be using painkillers, so things like narcotics. And there are known side effects of those medications, and one of them includes decreased motility of the GI tract. So, um, for instance, patients on these painkiller types of painkillers may uh, be chronically constipated. So long-term impacts are very common for people suffering from these conditions. The impacts are far beyond just the physiological impacts. So as far as the dietitians is concerned, we need, not, we need to not only assess the altered nutrition needs, but also we have to consider that the aftermath of the disease could put a person out of work or perhaps make them immobile Therefore, in addition to the physiological challenge after the acute phase, they may face things such as food insecurity. So in those cases, of course, coordination of care is very important. So we have to be keeping this in mind when we approach these patients. So let's just do a quick overview of the nervous system. Our nervous system can be divided into two parts. So one is the central nervous system, or CNS. This system processes the sensory information we receive and then allows us to respond and send the response of the motor signal to the proper tissue. Then the other system we have is the peripheral nervous system, the PNS. The job of this system is to conduct transmission of impulses between the central nervous system and the, per the central nervous system and the peripheral organs, including skeletal muscles and other internal organs. So we can think of the PNS as a two-way street. It not only transmits signals or orders from the CNS, but it can also receive feedback or signals from the peripheral tissue. So this is how it's a two-way street communication. It's how signals from the central nervous system are delivered to the peripheral organs, as well as how we receive sensory input from periphery tissue. Also, as part of the PNS, we have the autonomic division. So this is the part of the nervous system that is out of our voluntary control. We cannot exert conscious control over these nerve functions. And as we already know, this autonomic nervous system is divided into the sympathetic and the parasympathetic portions. As we mentioned, it's very important for the nervous system to communicate within the system and to also be able to communicate with other tissues or systems. So if we look at the structure of the neurons, um, these are the main cells in the nervous system, and we can see that it does have quite a few protrusions coming from the cell body. So first we see here the soma. So this is the main middle portion here of the cell. That's the cell body. We see the 
nucleus and all the organelles in here. Then we have this long protrusion outside of the cell body and this is called the axon. So this long axon here is wrapped by something called the myelin sheath. So the sheath has a very high lipid content and it is constantly turning over quickly. So what the myelin sheath does is it protects the axon from damage. And again, the axon is this long nerve fiber that sends signals um, outside the cell. Also, due to the sectional structure of the myelin sheath, so we see here that the myelin sheath is in sections, it allows nerve impulses to be transducted much faster because it can jump from section to section instead of having to go down continuously through the axon. So the structure here is very important. If we recall what we learned in advanced nutrition regarding vitamin B12 deficiency, it is due to the deficiency that we have impaired myelin sheath structure. So in severe B12 deficiency, we do see neurological symptoms. At the end of the axon, we have the axon terminals. So this is where the neuron is connecting with other neurons. So um, overall, here we see the neuron, the main cells that are ge um, generating the signals. And between neurons and surrounding them, we have a different type of cell called the glial, uh, glial cells. So when we're discussing neurological disorders or diseases, um, these conditions are the result of damage to either neurons or the glial cells or both, and they eventually impair the communication between these cells and between cells from other systems. So we mentioned that different neurons connect with each other at the axon terminal. So basically what we're showing here is the um, axon terminal here. And it will release chemical messengers called neurotransmitters into a space called the synapse. So that's the empty space between the neurons. So um, it's the space between the axon of a neuron and the dendrite of another neuron. So um, going back real quick, looking at our structure here, these protrusions are called dendrites. And we can consider dendrites the antennas that receive signals. And then after the body here produces, um, receives and produces this, processes the signals, it sends out um, a response uh, through the axons. So it's here we would receive the neurotransmitters from another cell. Um, in the synapse, goes to the dendrites, processed in the body, the soma of the neuron, and then the signal um, bounces down the axon to the axon terminals where, again, more neurotransmitters are released to start the process all over again in the next neuron. So this is kind of what we are seeing here in this diagram. Um, the, the release of the neurotransmitters so that one neuron can um, communicate with the next one. Similar to hormones, neurotransmitters need to have receptors to work. So therefore, the 3D shape of the receptor has to fit the shape of the neurotransmitter perfectly. Otherwise, there won't be binding and there won't be a reaction or a transduction of the signals. <clears throat> 